Once again, welcome to the Mindanao State University main campus, Marawi City. True enough that we live in a digital world, thus knowing the importance of media and information literacy is needed. To give us a talk on this, let us hear it from Professor Sir Haida Latif Yusuf, Director of the Marana Cultural Heritage Center. Professor Sir Haida Latif is an Associate Professor and Multimedia Practitioner from the Department of Communication and Media Studies of the Mindanao State University in Marawi City. She is currently the Director of the MSU Marano Cultural Heritage Center. As a practitioner, she is a columnist and radio anchor in several publications and radio programs in Marawi City and The Barn. She has written opinion articles about the Mindanao people's plight in publications, including research papers focused on social media, language and culture with projects related to media and information literacy for Muranao religious leaders and families in Lanao del Sur. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Salam to all of our faculty members and students of the Mindanao State University. MashaAllah, thank you very much for this chance of sharing with you what culture and media literacy is today. First of all, my ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share with you that long time ago, there is this what we call culture that affects the mindset of everyone. But today, it's not just the culture that we see, but rather more of the different cultures that we see in the media. Media today have actually inculcated a lot of things and introduced a lot of things to our minds and to our bodies and even to how we think and behave. So ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you this topic entitled Culture and Media Literacy. For today, these are the concepts that are very, very important for us to understand and to know as members of this society. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this idea of media and culture are two concepts that I needed to introduce to you one by one as we go along with this lecture. First, why do we have to understand culture? Because there is this idea that the online and the offline cultures may be the same and maybe not. All right. This is because what we see online these days would definitely affect the way we behave offline and vice versa. When we understand our culture as it is in this Mindanao State University, we all know that in the Mindanao State University, considering that we are probably more of the municipal region, or sometimes we could say that we are around 70% all Maranaos, we have seen how media affects our culture and how our culture affects media and the way we use them. So here at the Mindanao State University, we can see how culture and media have actually embraced each other and shaped our minds. But what is the catch? The catch is that when we talk about culture, we see history. We see different types of folklores. We see diverse information coming from generation to generation. And we also see people, all right? And how different skills from different people are actually affecting all of us. Now, when we say culture, we see also our community, our ethnicity, and of course, our religion. So being the uh, director of the Marana Cultural Heritage Center, it cannot be escaped that a lot of my being and a lot of um, the advocacies that we do nowadays would definitely 
include no, the uh, idea of our being Maranao, and that is our community. <clears throat> Next to that is, of course, this what we call media. Now, what is this media and this new media? Now, first of all, um, today, we do not just socialize physically and face-to-face. -face. We definitely socialize with our social media. And not only that, we get the chance to use skills that our educators like us and learners like you, students, uh, would definitely make use of in order to survive in your day-to-day -day schooling and in, in your virtual classes, in your online classes, and so on. So we utilize this space. We are actually looking at a different kind of space that we live in right now. So having culture and media as concepts, we needed to be aware of how we can really affect each other and how it can make an effect to each other. So for us not to be confused, we need this 21st century skill called media and information literacy. Now, what is this 21st century skills? The media and information literacy skills are actually basic these days. Gone are the days that we needed to have education or read all the books in the world in order to be having that kind of a wisdom and have that kind of idea. Today, it's different. We needed this 21st century skills, media and information literacy in order for us to survive. Now, what are these? According to UNESCO, MIL or media and information literacy constitutes a composite set of knowledge, skills, attitudes, competencies, and practice, and even practices that actually allow effectively use access analyze all right and at the same time critically evaluate i would like to enhance on that being an mil person or media and information literate person we need to critically evaluate and interpret the way we use and create and disseminate information these days now why is that because these media products you know, with the use of existing means and tools on a creative, legal, and ethical basis, we cannot escape the fact that this so-called knowledge that we can access using the media could definitely affect how we behave. So if we are not critical enough, then it might, it might destroy you as a person who is at the end of the line, as a receiver or when you share it to others you become the source of an information that is not supposed to be shared so I'll give you this example this is an example by one of the posts that were made and these are uh, examples of a meme no this is about the COVID vaccine and I think days ago, Carlito Galvez Jr. said something about this. And, watch out, this is what was emphasized. Wag po nating maliitin ang Sinovac. Pagamat 50.4% ang efekasi nito, mas mainam na ito kaysa wala. Hindi lamang talaga pwede sa mga health workers and uh, Ang health workers ang mababang efficacy rate. Pwede na ito sa mahihirap at sa mahihirap nating mga kababayan kaysa masayang. Oops! That is not allowable. Minaliit dito, no? It was actually, uh, or the people, the poor people were given an insult by this meme. And so is Galvez, no? Given words or put he was actually there were actually words put into his mouth all right but if we do fact checking 
all right? We get to see that there is that real version and the wrong version. What he actually said is that all of us, now take note, all of us po, kung magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng uh, pirmahan this coming month, no? Meron po tayong 60 million okay, doses of COVID-19 vaccine for the second quarter at chaka there, okay? At chaka third quarter po. So, you see, he said that there will be vaccine on the first and the second and the third quarter. All right? So, ibig sabihin he was actually misquoted and made with this. No? So according to Rappler, when they did some fact-checking, they found out that that was the real statement versus the wrong statement that was made out by people who are actually making certain false information. Now, what are these types? No? What, why do we need it to identify information and real information at that? Why do we need to fact-check? Now, that is part of our being critically evaluative. All right. Let me introduce to you the information disorder system or the ecosystem of information that might have influenced how you think. First is that we have false information and sometimes we do have harmful information. Okay. So we need to identify all the information that we access every day. And so we will see which one is false, just merely false, all right? And which one is false but a bit harmful and which ones are totally harmful. First is this what we call misinformation. Now, when we say misinformation, these are probably false claims or false connections or misleading content. They did not deliberately probably do you know, some false information or just a, uh, uh, a content that has not been uh, read well. No. Okay, so with this, with false information, all right, or misinformation, you just have that false connection. No? Sometimes there are people who are making connections from one thing to the other without necessarily destroying people or not harmful at all or sometimes there was that mistake of putting a date on a particular thing you know, or misquoted somebody but they don't have any intention to destroy other people but once there is that combination of falsehood and harm it now becomes disinformation Again, it is disinformation because it has false content, imposter content, just like what you saw minutes ago, and also manipulative or manipulated content, and the last, it can be fabricated. So as soon as these ideas are coming out, false content, imposter content, or manipulated content, or fabricated content, these all are called this information disinformation in other words we should not okay we should not confuse ourselves with that of false information and that of disinformation and the last is of course when it is totally harmful it now becomes mal information these are for example leaks uh, harassment or hate even hate speech speeches or uh, hate speeches or even pornography you know these are all mal information they are really designed to destroy people's minds now when we identify real information we now can share them to any platforms that you have in mind don't just share what you have not actually checked because once you did not check those information and if you did not see the facts behind them, you might share something that is dangerous, all right? So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank everyone for giving me this chance of sharing with you what media 
and culture could do to our lives. Once again, this is Professor Sorhaila Latip Yusuf of the Communication and Media Studies Department and of course, the Mrano Cultural Heritage Center. Thank you. Thank you.